watching The Producer's Room, a streaming web series featuring the creators behind the hit songs of today's music industry. Songwriters, music producers, and artists discuss their creative process as well as examining current issues and technologies in today's rapidly changing music business. Your host is producer, songwriter, and educator, Dave Tuff. Welcome to The Producer's Room. Welcome to this episode of The Producer's Room with Dave Tuff. As always, we're coming to you from the historic House of David Studios here on Music Row in Nashville, Tennessee. It's a nice spring day today, and I'm excited to have Jeff Stevens on the show with us today. Jeff, if you don't know his name, you should, is a record producer here in Nashville, also a songwriter and former artist. Um, if you know an artist named Luke Bryan, then you probably know Jeff's work. Jeff has worked on all of the Luke Bryan records, is that correct? That's right. From, from the start, yep. including Tailgates and Tan Lines that went double platinum, Crash My Party that went double platinum, and Kill the Lights. And so far, that came in in 2015, but it's already platinum, so yep. that's pretty exciting. Yep. Uh, in the 1980s, Jeff led a band, and it was called Jeff Stevens and the Bullets, and they recorded for Atlantic America and broke up in 1990. And then Jeff went on to have hits with artists like Trey. Casey Bird, Tim McGraw, and George Strait. Excited to have you here, yeah. Jeff. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate thanks, it. Thanks yeah, for having like me I said, there. it's a nice spring day, and we're we're enjoying yeah. it here in Nashville. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I'll tell you a little bit about the concept of our show. Um, if you haven't watched it before, it is uh, about the creative process, just getting into the nuts and bolts of of how you do your job as a record producer, as a songwriter, how you work with artists, all of that. I mean, we can go into technical stuff, but really, I want to know how you draw what you draw out of the artists that you're working with. So. Um, Usually we start with history, but I think people can find a lot of uh, your history online. I want to I want to start with what type of producer you are. Are you a uh, hands-on producer? Are you a, a technical producer? A musical producer? All of the above? Um, what is your function um, when you're in the studio yeah. working as a record producer? Yeah, uh, producing is like a thumbprint, isn't it? It's yeah, sort of everybody's different. Right. And, yeah, it is. And. Um, and the, and even the relationship that you have with an artist w can be totally different. Yeah. Uh, between artists. Mm -hmm. you know? So, uh, well, you know, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a songwriter, and and uh, that's really my, you know, my first uh, place. That's yeah. the thing that I. That's 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 really. That's really the the relationship that I try to forge with the artist is. Uh, an understanding about uh, mm -hmm. songs and direction. Yeah, and um, so that's really, you know, my, I, I, my, my, my strong suit. I, you know, I'm a guitar player. You know, I guess. I mean, I, I, I mean, I play <laughs> you understand a little, the I, instrument. Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and I, occasionally I'll make it onto the record, and yeah. if it's, you know, if it's if it, and um, but. You know that's uh, that's that, and you know as a um, you know I, I just think that you know I, as a technical like uh, as far as engineering goes, I I was always fascinated by tape recorders, and mm -hmm. I had a bunch of them when I was a kid, just mm -hmm. reel to reels, yeah, and those kinds of things, and and as I got uh, on into the '70s and and uh, into the into the '80s. Uh, I had little four track machines mm -hmm. and and um you know i i love uh i i understand what a lot of this stuff does you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. um but i usually keep my hands off of it yeah well that probably you gives know. you more time just to listen and yeah. not get into all those details so so you've built a team as you've kind of gone along and and found you know guys that you like working with like we were just talking about studios in town that you prefer working yeah. at and different yeah. sounds and all that mm -hmm. well let me uh, let me take a step back then and go a little bit of history how did and i think this is important how did you being an artist for that that period of time uh inform you as a producer now were you working with other producers did you get to kind of watch what they did and, and learn from some of their techniques and maybe some of their mistakes yeah i would as say well? yeah yeah absolutely yeah you know i mean i gosh i you know it's um, i heard uh General Norman Schwarzkopf say <laughs> back, you know, years ago that he didn't, he never really learned anything from great generals. He right. he learned a lot about how not to do things yeah. from from 
from uh, folks that uh, he, you know, that he, he didn't think had done such a great job. And so I can't say that that's been the total case with me. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've been in been in the room with a lot of great producers and yeah. uh, been in the room with some that you know I I didn't you know I didn't uh, I didn't see a whole lot happening there you know right so, right you know it's a little bit of both I think. But in that the, in the, the joke in Nashville where you just let the musicians do your thing and that's ninety percent ninety percent ninety five percent of your job already. <laughs> well, just, it can be. Yeah, I yeah. mean, and you can be, and and that and that's the way you should do it. Some days. Yeah. I mean, yeah. for me. Yeah. You know, I mean, there are days where, or a song or a session or whatever, and you know, you walk into it and you go, uh, you know, you can feel it. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, and uh, that, to me, that's. That's as much of a mark of, of, yeah. a, of a uh, of a good producer yeah. as somebody who's going to go in and start sure. fiddling just sure. for the sake of fiddling with it. Sure. You well, I, even on that point, I have a question that comes back to Luke's music. You guys are breaking a lot of new ground for country to me stylistically, like just doing a lot of hip, new, cool things. So, do you do you have that vision in mind beforehand? Do you kind of build the track as it goes along? I mean, it develops through the yeah. song. Yeah. Okay. You know, we start with a lot of times these songs will start with just Luke with just Luke on an acoustic guitar, yeah. and uh, and um, you know if the song dictates you know um, a certain way, then we just sort yeah. of we just sort of go that way. You but know? you're still you're still thinking outside the box, and and there must that just must be the way you work or you and your team work because I don't think yeah, every you producer know, in Nashville is doing that. You yeah, know? you know, so there well, must be something special well, there. We also have the luxury of going like like you know a lot of times for some of these songs, you know, I, since I have the the. You know, like anybody, I guess I've yeah. got the ability to go back later and uh, and overdub. Yeah. Um, so you have a lot home, of these... home set up at your at your place. Just yeah, kind of yeah. I've got, we've got a little yeah. studio down the street here, and yeah. and um, and uh, so you know we'll there there'll be you know, like we may get a a song in like a demo in where uh -huh. it's been it's been you can tell that it's been totally done in the box right. probably the day it was written by <laughs> yeah. by the songwriter yeah yeah and um you know and it's got a vibe to it that sure. that you really dig and um and uh you know we'll we'll listen to that and and what i tend to try to do first is i try to record it uh with a band mhm mm Mm -hmm. Because that's just you know it gives me the option of later on going well you know I think I did like you know a live sure, drum kit sure, you know sure, so sure. and it's kind of expensive to mm -hmm. do it that way if you kind of already like if you got a demo and everybody loves a demo you know and you you're gonna you know you could just just uh, call a songwriter up and, and get his files right, and right, do that and right I mean, and polish you know, them up and yeah um, but you know I prefer to at least try to beat the demo mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know i don't know you know i mean i uh, you know i i'm I, I can't predict the future so i have to try things yeah yeah so, that's true so uh um we try a lot of things that's good and uh, now is it uh, is the label approving these as you go along or are you just kind of experimenting and then you well, come in up the with case something of and... luke's records um uh you know a lot of times they come to the tracking dates yeah uh um but uh, when we have the whole band there and all that, but um, overdubs, not usually, I mean, because yeah. they don't yeah. even know we're, we're working on them, you know. That's so, cool. Um, but we may, you know, I mean, we may spend, you know, an hour tracking a band on a song, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but in overdubs spend, you know, weeks. Yeah, yeah. You know. Which we can do in my studio and don't cost anything. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's the whole idea. We're going to take a quick break and be right back with Jeff. See you in a minute. Welcome back to the producer's room. Once again, we're here with Jeff Stevens, and we were just talking about, I was really excited about what we were talking about. We were talking about, you know, you doing some overdubs in your home, or not home, I keep saying your your studio here on the row, your well, personal it's, studio. It's, it feels like home. Yeah, you know? and, then, uh, and then presenting them, and then you said the label was there sometimes, but really at that point, do you do you have you're kind of shaping the product and then you give that to them as the final master? Um, how long does that take from I guess conception of when you said from like an artist like Luke is doing a 
acoustic guitar, you're building around that. How long does that take from, I guess, start to when it's finally mastered and you're delivering the product? You mean like, like an album? Yeah, I guess like an album, yeah. I mean... Yeah, well, you know, I think uh, this this last record we done pretty quick. Yeah. Um, um, I think we I think we went in in um, toward the end of the year, like December, mm -hmm. and uh, our deadline was uh, June. Okay. So at that point, I guess my and question I think we is... recorded a total of sixteen wow. sides, and it became. What did they narrow it down to? Uh, well, they used them all for a target release. Oh, okay, uh, cool. But, um, but we, uh, we had 13 on the, okay, the regular album. The regular album. Yeah. And that leads me into another question, which uh, I wanted to ask you. We don't leave very many in a can. i tell you what, man. We, when we, <laughs> you use it when all, we spend, spend the time on them, yeah. you know, we just, it's like, to me, it's all about the songs, you yeah. know? And you get the song, if the song, even if, you know, even if the production is, you know, it's yeah. If the production is a nine out of ten or a right. three out of ten. You still got an incredible song there. Exactly. You know, so you know it's uh, so we. Gosh, I think we use about all of them somewhere. Well, two questions then. So, are you doing a song search before the pre-production? I mean, with publishers, are you uh, uh -huh. constantly just looking, even if you're not cutting at a certain point? Uh, well, I'm, I mean, I'm open to listen yeah. all the time, but I yeah. take a break. Yeah, exactly. I get so many songs in that uh, for Luke for yeah. a Luke project that um, that I, you know, I, I I I feel like you know that that working on anybody's out music, you know. I love jumping in on it and taking as much time as I need to. Right. But then, you know, I, I'm just so all in when mm -hmm. I'm working on something mm -hmm. that when I'm done with it, I got to get away with from that it. Break, you know? yeah, I hear you. Um, so with Luke, you say you get the word from the label that you guys are going to do a new record. What uh, what pre-production process is in there? Do you go to Luke and say, you know, let's develop a concept for this next record? Are you guys, is it revolving around any particular theme or um, sound? Um, um, you know, we usually just go into it with the songs, you know, yeah. let the songs dictate. Yeah. Um, and is he picking songs with you? Oh, at yeah. At that point, you guys oh, are Oh, absolutely. Down? Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, with any artist, it's very important uh, for me as a former artist Um to the, you know, we're 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 making their record. Yeah, yeah. You know, so they're, they're I I try to involve them yeah. as much as they can stand. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's I got to tell you that can be tough. It's, right. It can be, you know, it's 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 a little easier to just kind of do it yourself. Yeah. You right. Know, and 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 then call them up and say, hey, it's kind of done. You know, um, but uh, <laughs> but um, you know, uh, it's. Um, means a lot to me to make their record. So. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk a little bit more about this last album, which was Kill the Lights. And I read somewhere, or I saw somewhere, that your son worked on it with you. Is that correct? Yeah, well, he co-produced yeah. it. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And so how do, you, how, how do you guys, how are you guys as a team working together? And this, is this the first time you co-produced together? Uh, no, no, no. We've worked on a lot of other things together, okay. including his own. Uh, he had an act uh, or a duo called Fast Ride uh -huh. on, the, on the Republic um, back a few years ago and we co-produced that together um we're very different yeah. our skill sets are very different uh -huh. and um um and even our temperaments are very wow. different you know i'm kind of a hothead <laughs> and he's just not you yeah. know yeah. and he's very uh he's uh but he's not he's not a pushover by right. any right. means he's just um you know our, our we're, we're sort of a yin and yang kind yeah. of thing happening you know, old yeah. guy too and young guy you know yeah. I mean, and um, it, um, it, uh, it, it works great. Cool. And so I know he's had some cuts in town also as a mm -hmm. writer, right? Yeah. Some big cuts. And, yeah. and so I guess let's get a little bit more in, de in depth in that. What is he bringing to the table that maybe you don't have and vice versa? Well, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's gifted with a computer. Mm -hmm. uh, I, when I bought my first uh, Pro Tools rig, it was a Digi001 mm -hmm. back in... I guess about 99, and uh, that would have made him around um, 18 years old. He had already been working with all my four tracks and stuff, yeah, but yeah. but um, I bought the 001 for me, and uh, the videos came with it. You know, I set up a little video uh, 
a little a little TV beside it, you to know, and, and all the... you know, and I, I learned how to edit with it and on it, and um, you know, I, I learned the basics mm -hmm. of of recording with uh, Pro Tools, and and um, and he just immediately, you Stay know, uh, you know, took over, and um, he's uh, he's gifted. Uh, yeah. When you hear. Like if if I mean if if, if there's in, if, if there's credit to be given on on Luke's records, as far as um, you know forward movement mm -hmm. and forward thinking, Jody uh, is is our, is our guy. Yeah, yeah. You know that um, you know I mean I, I'm you know I, I I push for that as well. You know by 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 using any any means I can, whether it's musicians, mm -hmm. engineers. Uh, you know, songs and arrangement, you know, um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, he's, uh, his, his expertise, um, uh, sonically is, uh, is, is, is one of the main reasons yeah. why, you know, we feel like that, you know, we're somewhere near mm -hmm. the front of the mm -hmm. pack. Yeah. And we were just talking about, speaking of that, we were just saying that, uh, Kill the Lights, like I said, had gone platinum, but only just a couple of albums went platinum last year. And uh, mm -hmm. we were just talking about how that's it's so difficult. And you were saying if we lived in another decade where actually, you know, music wasn't being stolen, it probably would have, you know, done yeah. even better. But I, so, so we actually have a segment, and I think it might be a good point to move into that segment after our next break called On the Record, where we talk about one particular song, and maybe you could... We could talk about a Luke song if you can okay. think of one, and right. that you and your son worked on that. Okay. That maybe give some examples of how you guys kind of contributed to it. So, okay. we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back with on the record. See you guys in a minute. Welcome back to the producers' room. We're going to go into our segment called on the record right now. All right. So I was asking you, perhaps we could talk about a song. We won't play the audio. Our audience can go listen to it and and listen after we talked about it, but. Uh, maybe off of Luke's last album where it was kind of a combination of you and your son's talents being contributed to it. So um, any particular song that would be good to well, discuss um, off that one? Well, I mean, we could talk about Kill the Lights. Yeah. Um, and you were, you were we, a writer on that uh -huh. one, is that right? Luke and uh, Jody and I wrote that. Cool. And uh, it actually started um, just down the street in, in our studio. Mm -hmm. um, Jody and I were just kind of playing around and I had a bass guitar and and um, he he was he had just a just a just was yeah. just kind of playing a drum little drum thing and and um, uh, I thought it sounded pretty cool you know it was just that uh -huh. uh, just that lick that dun, 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 mm -hmm. -dee -dee -dee. just kind of a walking thing on a bass guitar mm -hmm. and and so we recorded it and um, we had that little snippet of I don't, you know maybe 20 seconds mm -hmm. of that and and uh we were writing with luke like you know a month later so i don't know you know a little while later yeah, and yeah. um i think we were out at luke's house and uh and um you know we're all kind of looking at each other <laughs> you know not sure what to do and and um i said we got this little <clears throat> piece of music here that that uh <laughs> That we were working on, uh -huh. and and uh, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't remember it. I, I didn't even have a bass guitar that day. <laughs> I don't think. I, I mean, yeah, I did. I had one, but I, I couldn't remember it. So I, we just played the little piece of tape, you know. Yeah. And Luke really liked it, and uh, he he said, "I've got a title called Kill the Lights," and and uh, Luke Luke is a great songwriter, and um, he's just. Um, he you started know, as a songwriter. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I thought. Yeah. And uh, which is, you know, I think the reason that the both of us are so yeah. attracted to each other and we've worked so well together mm -hmm. because that's at our core. That's really what we are. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> but uh, you know, we uh, we wrote the song there that day. Uh, you yeah. know, the nuts and bolts of the song. And uh, um, you know, I think we came back and you know wrote a bridge for it maybe later on and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and. Uh, in the studio, you know, we uh, we we did a we, we went ahead and um, uh, Jody did a uh, you know an in the box little demo of it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, I think we had we went ahead and re re the day we wrote it, we recorded Luke's vocal on it, so we had a 
had a you know just a rough vocal mm -hmm. of it and uh, and uh, I, I think the other than the bridge uh, I think the arrangement held what we yeah. had for that first yeah. day and um, uh, when we went into the studio the day we recorded it now do you remember which studio you used for that we yeah we recorded it at Ocean okay. Way uh -huh. the A room or the B room yeah not that our audience but you can still go check out Ocean Way and yeah, see what right. the room that's the big yeah, yeah. orchestral room where you yeah, get those big drum yeah the big and, one yeah, yeah. Uh, that's our favorite room there and and uh, we had Greg Morrow that wow. day playing drums, Man. and of course, you know, yeah. with his talent and and, and that room, it's <laughs> just yeah, it's yeah. just tough yeah. to go wrong. And and so um, uh, um, now, are you doing? Are, uh, I know I'm going on some of these asides, but are you doing yeah. a five piece band, six piece <clears throat> band, like double guitars or any pedal steel or anything? Like yeah, what's we've, your core? we've been using J T. Cornfloss and and Kenny Greenberg yeah. on guitar for, okay. for, for for a few years yeah. now. At the going down at the same time, right? And um, and lately we've been using uh, drums, mm -hmm. bass, the two guitars. Um, and um, micro hoss on keyboards, okay, and yeah, we'll yeah. go down with that. And yeah. sometimes acoustic guitar along with that sure. at the same time. Um, but uh, we've gotten to where we used to. When I first started out with Luke, I think I had like twenty people out there at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. it's like herding cats. Right, and, right. And um, uh, and I ended up finding myself in the overdub, just like hacking. You know, just pulling well, stuff away. Well, I think it's away. still important for our audience to hear that you're even recording with the live band. Like, yeah. I mean, because I think one, Nashville's one of the only few places that still even has guys looking at each other playing mm -hmm. together. Yeah. But what what energy do you get out of that as opposed to let's say if you overdub one thing and then overdub another thing? Is it a different energy? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. sure. And uh, you know, and it's. You know, it's really, you know, the, um, I'm, you know, that's, there's, there's definitely more, uh, more energy, more intensity, right. you know, you know, you feel like, wow, you know, you're so excited when you got a whole band there in a big yeah. studio. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a different thing overdubbing on a computer, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it's mm -hmm. just, you know, you, th 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 when you're doing that, then you've got to watch out for, you know, on a computer like that, you, you've got to. You've got to watch out for your energy level mm -hmm. and make sure that you're you're really doing something that yeah. that that works. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so you guys go in and, and you, well you had like you said you had the the framework there. You go in with the band to Ocean Way. You guys record some tracks and then do you have to decide what you're going to use or lose or? Yeah, you know, by going in with a full band like that, you know, we we end up um, uh, uh, invariably, you know, and I. I, I hate it, you know, but yeah. but but you know sometimes you you know the, there you've got somebody who's a musician who's put who's put on a great part, but mm -hmm. you know it's just not after, right. after we start working on it there, it just doesn't really fit anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably if they could come back in, they could probably make it work. But yeah. you know at that point, you know your brain is you sure. know is on to something else and. And uh, so, yeah, we end up, um, you know, losing some of the things. And, 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 of course, some of the things that we do ourselves, even. Mm -hmm. you know, I mm -hmm. mean, gosh, right. we try. <laughs> we, I mean, we get in there and we try yeah. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. I mean, between me and Jody, you know, we'll spend two or three days on something. But that's you know. cool in the co-production. You can run things off of each other and if one person can. Yeah. You know, I think that's because normally a producer wouldn't have anybody to bounce that off of other than maybe yeah. an A&R person or something. So that's, yeah, yeah. That's cool. And then we stuff. also have Luke as far yeah. as like the overdubs because what what happens then is, is, you know, we work on something for, you know, a week or so and yeah. I send it to Luke and he hates it, <laughs> you know, and uh, which is always, you know, you know, you want to please the guy right. so like much. Like you said, you know? it's for, for and him. So I yeah. just, he hates it and I hate it too. You know, he's just like, <laughs> you know, and he gets, he gets upset because he doesn't want to say anything, but, yeah. but he does. He, you yeah. know, he's, it's very important for him to get what he wants. Right. And so, you know, I find myself sometimes just scrapping yeah. things that we've done. So it's things that we've spent a lot of time mm -hmm. on, sometimes even a good bit of money on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And uh, just scrapping it and going, well, you know, we tried. You know, it didn't exactly. work out, and uh, you know, you, you you move on to something else. 
So here's the next question. I love this. We're going through the pre-production, the production. How do you know when it's done? I know that seems like such a simple question, but how and do you know if you, you know, haven't added too much, not you too know, little? I, you know, I just <laughs> feel it, you yeah. know, uh, um, uh, I, I can feel it getting there. And yeah. when it's there, you know, I go, we're there, Yeah. you know, and, uh, and, I, and I don't get that feeling until you're, well, I'm there. I don't, right. I don't, it's like, a, like, in other words, you know, I, I could be really, really close and mm -hmm. not know it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, there'll be like, Jody may go, you know, uh, Jody, uh, Jody may, you know, play a, uh, uh, a, a little bit of a tambourine or something. Mm -hmm. And then just all, all of a together. sudden, yeah. you know, I'm just like, okay, we, <laughs> we did it. Yeah, we got it, you know. Now does, okay, so at this point, you're ready to send it off to mix. And do you remember who mixed that particular song? Uh, uh, Derek Bass. So you send it off to Derek, you get the mix back. Does that ever inform your production decisions to say, oh, we shouldn't have put that part in there. We need to go ahead and mute that, or we need to add something, even after you get back that first draft of the mix yeah. or that first round? Well, you know, we're... Uh, uh, I'm a big believer in um, allowing the mix down engineer to do their yeah, job. Yeah. Uh, but I'm also a big believer in once it's done mm -hmm. and I'm and I'm going in to approve it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I you know I I, I want to be able to have the flexibility to say to to the engineer mm -hmm. or the, the mix down person, you know, hey, this can we. This doesn't feel right to me. I, sometimes yeah. I can't really articulate it, right, you know. Right. But uh, sometimes I definitely can, and um, uh, so. Um, um, Are you guys going through? I mean, like they say, Thriller went through ninety revisions. You're not going through that many. Maybe two or three mix revisions. Um, and but what, you know, some sometimes it's just done. You know, yeah, you you yeah. hear it and you you know you're just yeah. you're just completely thrilled and and then and then and then. I, uh, in keeping with my philosophy that, you know, the buck doesn't stop here with me. Right. Luke has to hear it and approve sure. it. Sure. And Luke's sure. tough. Yeah. He's very tough, you know, and he's, he's, um, he, he doesn't always like myself. He doesn't always know how to articulate. Right. Well, like anybody, you know, yeah. sometimes you just don't know. Yeah. You just go, I just don't know. Something's it's just not, you know, I don't, I can't put my finger on it. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, more often than not, he can kind of put his finger on what he doesn't like cool. about it, and um, and he'll tell me. And and uh, sometimes it's an easy fix. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's dismantling it, yeah, and taking it completely apart, and um, and that's that's tough. Yeah, it's really tough because then you start as a producer, you feel like you're starting to lose it. Mm -hmm. You know, you're starting to lo lose the. The you know once you start messing with something too much, I you know you got to realize you know I realize that once you start messing with it too much, yeah, you're you, you're you're you could lose it, <laughs> you know, yeah. and uh, that's pretty scary stuff. You yeah, know, when you know you've got Spend a great song, yeah. and uh, you're you're gonna you could you could you could uh, really mess it up. So, but you've you've found so far a place to make everyone satisfied and happy and then is a and r at that point listening and also giving their like you got management you got a and r all yeah. trying to you know give uh, their two cents you know i have to say that uh, uh that luke's label and uh, his management you know they they pretty much give us a free reign that's great you know and um uh um and i I could never thank them enough for that, you know, yeah, uh, because yeah. it's really, you know, uh, what's so good about that is, you know, that uh, is it allows me to try to get the most out of mm -hmm. the artist, mm -hmm. you know, um, that I can. Cool. And um, so I'm I'm grateful to them that's, for that. Yeah, that's that's a lot of liberty. That's great. And so last last step in the process, and we'll be done with our on the record is mastering. And so you send it off for mastering. And do you remember who you used in mastering on that particular? Adam Ian. And do you attend your mastering sessions, or do you just kind of trust them to send uh, you back? The... You know what? I I used to go, and I realized that that I have no idea what I'm doing. <laughs> You're just going to get in the middle of it. Uh, yeah, you don't need to... And every time I ask a question, yeah. I didn't understand the answer. Right. <laughs> so, um, it sounds good, you know. Uh, you know, uh, so uh, no. Uh, yeah. In the case there with Adam, uh, they're you know they're up in Maine, mm -hmm. and uh, we send them up there, and we get them back, and 
And, uh, you know, we give it a listen, mm -hmm. uh, usually me along with the mix down uh -huh. engineer and, and, uh, and Jody, if he's yeah. producing it. And, uh, if we're, if we're happy with it, then, uh, then, uh, you know, we roll on. Nice. <clears throat> okay, guys, that was really cool. So once again, go ahead and check out that song on YouTube and we'll be right back with another segment of the producer's room. Welcome back to the producer's room. We're here with Jeff Stevens, and this is our last segment. Um, I want to ask you a couple more questions about your work with Luke, and then we'll move on. Uh, but uh, what what do you think? I mean, you guys have been so successful as a team. Obviously, you'd love to attribute it all to production, but, you know, there's other things involved. There's touring, there's marketing, there's all of the above uh, to Luke's huge success. Is it a connection to the fans? Is it a, is it a, his live show? Is it all of the above? Well, you, you know, you, you hit on, upon the thing that, that he and I really have in common. And yeah. that's, that's at the core of, of, of all of this is, is what we're really trying to do as an artist. Mm -hmm. Your goal is to connect with an audience, mm -hmm. your audience, mm -hmm. to connect with them, you know, for them to give you feedback, you know, and, and for you to put it out there. And, and, and um, both of us, you know, we really, we understand that uh, and, and, and we, you know, we try to uh, hold that in its highest order you know mm -hmm. uh, we're not very artsy kind of guys mm -hmm. you know we're we're really making music it's there for the fan yeah i mean for for yeah, for you know for for fans mm -hmm. for his fans mm -hmm. and um you know I, I think that's 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 one of the ingredients to hit to, to the secrets to his success you know he's luke is a great uh team builder Mm -hmm. He built a great team. I attribute that to his talents as a, as a, I guess you'd say a manager. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, not, he, when he finds someone that he trusts, uh, he, he stays there with them and he, he, you know, but he, he just has an uncanny ability of finding folks that, that work for him. That leads me into my next question. And like I said, I feel like you, your whole team and Luke's whole team is, is really breaking new ground, either album-wise or radio-wise. You guys are setting the new trend for country music. I know there's probably some traditionals that say, well, that's not quite country music, which they've been saying forever, you know, even yeah. probably since back in the 50s when Chet Atkins took out the, the fiddles and put in some, you know, other stuff that took out the pedal steel. But um, in your brain, and this is a little deeper philosophical question, what makes a good song number one for, for Luke or for any other country artist? And, and can you define what country music is anymore? I guess would be the two questions. Well, I, I can't define country music yeah. now any more than I could when I was a kid. Yeah. You know, I mean, it just, you know, I think country music speaks to regular people. Right. You know, it's usually a pretty plain spoken, lyrically mm -hmm. driven um, and it's still, you know, it's still lyrically driven, you know, pretty plain spoken, you know, um, you know, we, there's, you know, so I, I think in that way it's, you know, we're still setting ourselves apart. Sure. You know, sure. that way. And then when you're, when you're sorting through all these songs, you, like you said, you probably listen to three, 400, 500 songs in any given project. How do you, what makes a good song? Can you define that or is that more of a gut feeling? Well, I mean... Without giving a, you know, we could sit here for hours talking. Yeah, about yeah. NSI well, workshop, I mean, my but. listening process is pretty simple. You know, I put something on, I listen to it, and I, 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 I you know, I, I, on on a demo, you know, the the first thing I see is the title. Right, right. You know, and I see the title, and as a songwriter, you know, it's, you know, it's, have I heard that title before? Right, you know, right. that's the first thing that goes sure, through my head. And sure. if I haven't, then and and I also, you know, and I go, well, that's. That's a cool title, you know. Yeah. I mean, it takes a lot for me to say that's a cool title <laughs> because, you know, I've yeah. been around a while. Yeah. And um, um, and uh, so, you know, if I see something, I go, well, I kind of heard this before, you know, the title anyway. And then, you know, I hear the first line of the song and the first line of the song doesn't grab me. Right, right. Man, if it doesn't grab me the first line, you know, on any song, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Boy, it's tough for yeah. me to it's tough yeah. for me to keep moving on. Yeah. Because uh, we're living in a 15 second world now. Yeah. And um, everybody's attention span is, as we all know, is a lot less than it used to yeah. be. I think so, that's a good point. Like even on we were talking about that's my kind of night. It's boom right into the verse, and I get you know talking yeah. about short attention span. Yeah, I mean, you guys yeah. Are right so there. Um, yeah. you know when I'm on a, on a song, it's like, yeah. man, I, I you know I I, I want to you know I've got to be hooked. Yeah. yeah, to use that old term, you know, I, I've got to be hooked from the beginning, and that's good. I, I mean, like there's that. not you know there's there's nothing earth shattering about that. It's yeah. just that. That, uh, you know, I, I've always felt, you know, I just feel like I'm just, a, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm just an average person, you know. I, I sort of feel, still feel like I'm, I just have average ears, you mm -hmm. know. But, and so uh, I'm not going to get that deep into something. I'm not going to get that wrapped up into sure. it. It's got sure. a, I've got a busy life and yeah. it better hit me. Sure. You know. And that's, I think that's great. Because everybody else like, has yeah. got, you got a busy life. Just you like know? the consumer. Okay, so. As our audience knows, we have a, another section of the show called Rapid Fire. And as I mentioned to you earlier, this is the place where we ask you some off-the-wall questions. And, and it, once again, if you, uh, if you say pass, that's fine. Um, so we kind of just throw some more life philosophical questions at you. The first one I have down here is, what is your most treasured possession and why? Uh, possession. Gosh, I guess that's like a trinket of some kind, well, right? Or I don't know. I, I could, you could possession. you could interpret it as people in your life, or yeah. You know, I, okay. Well, that would know. be my wife. Yeah, that's okay. great. That's great. I like that. Because uh, possessions, don't, I don't even have. Yeah. I don't have a wedding ring. I have like a like a tattoo that's here cool. for that. You're so, playing there. <laughs> so you know, I'm yeah. not. I, yeah. I don't really. I mean, I I, I mean, I like kind of having stuff, but you know, I, I also if I lost yeah. it, I, yeah. In fact, you know, I don't know. Well, you know. Going to that, which is another question I had for you, is how do you balance, and mainly for our aspiring producers and stuff out there, how do you balance a busy, you know, because we know this industry has demands on us, balance your family life with a busy production schedule and all it's that? It's easy for me. I take time to, even when I'm making a record, I still try to take time to decompress mm -hmm. a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, I, you know, I used to, Back when I was younger, I used to think that there was something wrong with that, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm not, right. didn't have my, every time. didn't have my nose to the grindstone every yeah. second yeah. of the day. Uh, but I, I try to, I try to keep a balance, you know, yeah. and my, my wife actually won't let me get too far out there. <laughs> that's good. That's yeah. good. So, so do you schedule in breaks or after a big project, like you said, you kind of have some time to Well, you know, I mean, somewhere. just, you know, just sometimes like yeah. even in the middle of a project, you know, if, if, if she says you, you need a, you need a yeah. break, you know, we, let's go to dinner, or let's yeah. do this or that, good. you know, I don't, I don't, yeah. you know, I, I don't go, oh no, I've got to stay in the studio till <laughs> midnight. Right, know? right. Okay. So a uh, question for a songwriter here. Uh, favorite song lyrics, any song, it can be any song, or maybe you have a couple of, of favorites. Um, hmm. Gosh, that's classics tough. or yeah. Well, let's tough. put it this way: if you were stuck on a, a desert island, which we always use that analogy, yeah. Uh, you know, three favorite, five favorite albums or songs that you might yeah take with you. What yeah. maybe what something that was influences on you growing yeah. up? Yeah, yeah. Born to Run. Yeah, that's and, a good uh, one. Asia. Yeah, it's good. Uh, yeah. Um, Waylon's uh, Dream in My Dreams. See, I don't think I've ever heard I need to... Incredible check, album. Yeah, check that one out. Uh, Jack Clement yeah, produced it, and, yeah. and it's just an incredible album. That's good. That's, a, that's one of the country records. And I was thinking about this the other day. They're, they're, Garth Brooks, because uh, I heard one of the songs on the radio, uh, In Pieces. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know if that was yeah. his third album or his fourth album, but it's an absolute masterpiece. Yeah, and then just speaking to strong songs, once again, just picking the right songs, you know. I think you're right on, on that on that Garth stuff. Okay, um, this one's an easy one. Uh, if you couldn't live in Nashville, where would you like to live? <laughs> uh, on the beach somewhere or? Well, I got a place the, on the beach. <laughs> well, there you go. Makes it easy. Uh, the Great White North. No, <laughs> no, 
Man, I, I love Nashville, man. Good. You know, good. You know, I, I like California. Yeah. I mean, I could I could live somewhere in California. Okay, I like that. Well, if we can all afford it, you know, that's the hard thing yeah. about California. Uh, which living person do you most admire, or do you have any heroes perhaps that have passed on, like you would really just say, you know, that's someone I looked up to when I was younger, either just someone here in Nashville or someone out in the public, public spotlight? Um... Uh. Hmm. Or could we even be a mentor, you know? I mean, someone in Nashville that you... Yeah. Well, you know, I, I always, you know, um, I, 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 you know, as, I mean, in, in, in town here, you know, there's, there's uh, writers that, that I admire and, and producers that I admire, you know, I, I always and still uh, really admire uh, Tony Brown. I just... Yeah thought that he and think that he you know is uh just uh, one of the one of the very best at sort of selflessly you know he had he didn't have anything you know he didn't have any publishing companies he didn't have any recording studios you know he was just yeah trying to go in there with great artists and make great records yeah. you know and uh, i think yeah that I uh, I, i've although i've done nothing to the magnitude he has and um I'm sort of the many, many, many version of that as far as, you know, I really try to to do what I saw him do and, and continue to see him doing. It's just try to pick the best song and go into the artist and do your best job with mm -hmm. it, you know. Yeah, that's great. So now we get to move on to um, maybe some, like I said, advice for either the students that are watching or aspiring producers. But uh can you think of any failure or setback that became a learning lesson for you? Yeah, I as an can, artist I can, I can in the think studio, of a big one. I can think of <laughs> okay. a big one. Some a mistake to learn from, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I moved to town, moved to Nashville, you know, as an artist, uh, <clears throat> there are there are a lot of different reasons why this happened, but but you know, I wasn't uh, honest with myself about the music. Mm -hmm. um, and I wasn't, you know, I wasn't, uh, you know, uh, I, I really didn't scrutinize the songs well enough, you know, and, 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 and I really hadn't learned how to be, you know, how to, how to take a look inward and, and be honest, mm -hmm. you know, about, about is this going to translate? Your own songs or other songs? Or yeah, both? yeah, yeah, my own songs. Yeah. And, uh, and so... You know our 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 songs, uh, our our music, and my band. You know it didn't do so well, and uh, I you know I I learned later on that you know if I if I really listen to the audience, and, and be honest with myself mm -hmm. about what they're saying and what you know and their feedback, you know uh, that uh, I would you know that I, I, you know I would I would reach more people that way. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's it's important, you know. I so I, I I learned a lot about being honest with myself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, and uh, that's that's really what I try to when I get to speak to younger folks um, to, to to really listen mm -hmm. to your audience, listen uh, closely for that feedback. You know, uh, one short example for me that 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 um, happened many years ago uh, Steve Bogart and I wrote a song called Carrying You Love With Me that George Strait cut. Yeah, that's a great one. And um, we played the song right after we wrote it we played it for our uh, our uh, song plugger Michael Knox who went on has gone on to be a great producer in his own right. And um, I played it to Michael myself after Steve had gone home and and uh, Michael said, uh, man, I love it. I love it. Yeah. He said, he, he asked me, he said, what does this lyric mean in the second verse? And my heart sank, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, I have to explain to him yeah. Yeah. what this means. And I thought to myself, I, I can't stick my head out of every single radio in the United States and explain this second verse mm -hmm. to people. Mm -hmm. If I had to explain it to him, I'm probably right. going to have to explain it to some other people. Sure. So he left. I didn't really tell him how hard that hit me. Uh, I, actually, I didn't tell him. 
But I called up uh, Bogart. I said, man, we need to rewrite the second mm -hmm. verse. And, and, uh, and we did. We just rewrote it. You know, uh, cool. I just threw it out because uh, I just felt like, you know, it wasn't right. And yeah. learning not to take it personal. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. Just, you know, that was, in that, in that respect, you know, Michael was playing the role of an audience yeah. member, you yeah. know, or, 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 or just as some sure. truck driver sure, somewhere, sure, sure. you know. And, uh, and I do the same way, like if I'm playing songs live, you know. I mean, hey, man, if, if people are talking yeah. when you're singing a song, well, shit, you know. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you know, we all know those certain songs that make people shut up and yeah, just turn, yeah, around, yeah, turn their heads. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, yeah. and so that's that's a signal. That's something yeah. that you can, as an artist, songwriter, you know, you you can take that in. I mean, if they're if 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 they're if they're yeah. if they're talking about their taxes, then you know. <laughs> well, here let's let's wrap it up with this question. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the business. You know, you've you like you said you you've been in Nashville for for a while. So how do you see it change or how have you seen it change and then what is the what do you think the future of the business is as far as any any trends that people should pay attention to or you know just maybe look at it from the perspective of the advice you give your son with this we're just in such a turbulent time but you know um yeah it doesn't seem any more turbulent to me than any really? other time well that's yeah. good yeah i mean it changes i yeah. mean i you know, I think that, um, uh, you know, if if you don't like what's going on right now, just wait about a month or so, you know, <laughs> and turn the radio on again, you know, because it, yeah. it, it, you know, it, 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 it changes and, sure. and sometimes it's a little slower than other times. But uh, yeah. I, I started, you know, um, playing and listening to country music in the late 60s. And I mean, you yeah. know, when you when you throw that up to now, it's just. I know that it's going to change. I embrace the changes. Yeah. I, I love that. I, yeah. I, I I love looking for something different. And, uh -huh. and um, when I hear something different, that's thrilling. Yeah. You know, and uh, and um, you know, uh, you know, you can you can sort of uh, you know, I, I could address you know, like the last few years, you know, you, you hear these calls of oh, everything sounds the same and all that stuff. Well, you know, when you having lived through right. different eras. Of, of it, um, it tends to sound <laughs> alike, you yeah. know, in those eras, you know, it's just, it's just kind of, kind of the way it goes, you know. Yeah. Well, I still, you know, I, like I said, personally, I really think you guys are still breaking some, some ground. So I, you know, well, I mean, I maybe so. that experience that, yeah. that's informing what you guys do, but congratulations on everything that okay. you guys have done. All right, man. Nice having you, Jeff. Thanks yeah. for your time. Good to be here. And we'll see you on the next episode of the Producers Room.